In this video, we're going to take a look at doing some practice with multiplying and dividing fractions. So take a minute and copy these uh, three questions down. Notice that there's multiplication and then the same fractions divided on the right-hand side. So take a moment to copy these questions down and then pause the video, work out the solutions to each question, and after you've worked out the solution uh, and you have an answer for each question, then resume the video uh, and check uh, to, see, uh, to see how correct you were. So here in practice problem one, we have 5 eighths times 3 fourths. So our rule for multiplying fractions is to multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. And so we land up here with <clears throat> 5 times 3 over 8 times 4. And remember, we can check at this point here and see if there's anything we can reduce while the numbers are quite small from top to bottom. And it doesn't look like anything can reduce because 8 is not a multiple of either 5 or 3, and 4 um, it doesn't work nicely with 5 or 3 either. So we can simply carry on and multiply across the numerator, giving us 15, and across the denominator, giving us 15 over 32. Similarly, when we divide these two fractions, we follow the very simple rule of inverting the denominator, inverting the denominator, Remember, the denominator always comes after the divide sign, so we invert the denominator and then change the sign to multiplication. And now we can see at this point, we can see at this point, the 4 and the 8 go really nicely together because 4 goes into 4 once and 4 goes into 8 two times. So instead of having 5 times 4 over 8 times 3, and then having to reduce, we could do it at this stage. And now, because we've reduced, we said 4, when, four went into 4, or it was divided by 4 one time. And 8 divided by 4 is 2. Then we have here 5 times 1 over 2 times 3, which is 5 over 6. And again, doing it this way, we would have had 5 times 4, which is 20 and 8 times 3, which is 24. So we would have had 20 divided by 24. But then we realize that 4 goes into both of these numbers. And 20 divided by 4 is 5. And 24 divided by 4 is 6. And these answers are equivalent. In practice problem two, we have 9 sixteenths times 3 fourths. Again, there isn't anything that really looks like we can reduce from numerator to denominator. And so we're just going to go ahead and follow our rule, rule for multiplying fractions, which is multiplying straight across the top and straight across the bottom. And so 9 times 3 is 27, and 16 times 4 is 64. So we get 27 over 64. And if we look at the division of these two, 9 sixteenths divided by 3 quarters, following our rule for dividing fractions, we have 9 sixteenths. We invert the denominator, which is the second fraction that is written, and we get 4 thirds. And we change the sign from division to multiplication. And now we can multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. But again, I think it's much easier at this point. The 9 and the 3 go really nicely together because 3 goes into 9 three times and 3 goes into 3 one time. And look at this 4 and the 16 go really nicely together because 4 goes into 4 once and 4 goes into 16 four times. 
And so we could, just like the last problem, we could have 9 times 4 over 16 times 3, but I think it's easier to reduce when your numbers are still broken up like this and fairly small. And instead of having this, and this would be 9 times 4 is 36, and 16 times 3 is 48. So instead of having 36 over 48, if we reduce first, if you like that method, now look what we have here. We've reduced, and so now we have 3 times 1 over 4 times 1, which is 3 fourths. Again, these are equivalent. And so you see that these two are equivalent. And if we take a look at example problem three, now we're dealing with a whole number again. And it is important to be able to multiply and divide by whole numbers when you have fractions, especially if you're measuring something that's three and a half feet or three feet uh, and seven eighths uh, or three inches, uh, three and seven eighths inches times two. You want to be able to multiply by by whole numbers. So again, we're going to change we're going to change the whole number into a fraction with a denominator of one, which is equivalent. And now, aha, can you see it already? The two goes really nicely with the four. Two goes into two one time, and two goes into four twice. So this gives us three times one over two times one, which is three halves. Alternatively, if we didn't reduce there, we would have had six fourths, which would then reduce into three halves. And if we look at the division here, three fourths, I'm going to put an extra step in here, just adding my denominator of one. So three fourths divided by two over one. And now that becomes three fourths times one over two really important that you do not reduce until the sign is multiplied. You cannot reduce the way I've been reducing here until your sign is multiplication. You can't do it with addition, you can't do it with subtraction, and you can't do it with division. You can only reduce this way top to bottom, like we did here. You can only reduce this way if the operation is multiplication. So it needs to be multiplication before you can reduce it. And you see here, top to bottom, there's nothing really that goes nicely together. And we land up with 3 times 1 over 4 times 2, which is 3 eighths. So that should give you an idea if you understand how to multiply and divide 